Scalia's doctor had informed her that Scalia had visited him for a shoulder injury last week, but also suffered from severe chronic ailments. Look, people die at 79 in their, in their sleep. They die at 29 in their sleep, 39. But she didn't even see the body. She was told by the marshal that he was found with a pillow over his head, but that it was a heart attack. So they listed myocardial infarction. Now a new justice of the peace down there, you know what a justice of the peace is? There's somebody without a job that they deputy. All right, you're a justice. All right, what? I never, I never went to high school. Sir, you're justice of the peace. Speaking with the Washington Post, another right-wing newspaper, said she would have undoubtedly ordered an autopsy if in the same position. Juanita Bishop, a justice of the peace in Presidio, Texas, told the Post, eh, if it had been me, I would want to know. Did you hear this one? So this is a big story. Don't, don't underestimate this. Just because it hasn't become a big story doesn't mean it isn't a big story, number one, and it won't be. This is going to go on for years. But you're hearing it first on this show. No one else will touch the story. So why am I doing it? Because I, I believe that there's foul play as a great possibility. Okay, that's number one. And now let's look at the marshal. That's important, too. Who, why would he not have Secret Service? He declined the security detail while at the ranch? What is that about? Why would he decline security? I never heard of anything like this. Dies in office? With a few months to go of the most fanatical, corrupt president in modern American history, if not in the whole history of this republic. A fanatic maniac now wants to put a, a stooge from the New York courts on the Supreme Court. Someone handpicked by a gunner at Al Sharpton. Is it any wonder I couldn't wait for, for Monday? So who's the U.S. Marshal? I haven't given you that yet. You just say, oh, the U.S. Marshals were there. I watch TV. I know what Marshals are. Do you? Who is he? Who appointed him? You'll have to stay tuned for another few minutes and then get back to your Chardonnay and your surfboarding on this President's Day on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. it's a mystery to anyone with a brain you know what's amazing to me america loves mystery novels america can't get enough of fake actors pretending to be heroes uh fake actors pretending to be detectives who won't let the truth go they love it but here's a story that smashes them in the face and it's nothing to them because it's not front page news he was found with a pillow over his head but that's not really the only point that's of interest today have you forgotten what happened on, on February 9th? Let's see, when was that, 15 years ago? No, it was six days ago. February 9th was 16 years ago. The Supreme Court made a decision to halt the carrying out of Obama's climate change regulation. Did you, did you catch that one? Obama was stopped by the Supreme Court. And take a guess who wrote the rebuttal to Obama's fanatical pork barrel green agenda. Scalia, did you, you didn't know that? That didn't hit it in your no, no, local paper? So that happened to have five, six days ago. That's all. So it was put on hold. The U.S. Supreme Court declared the coal power plant rules were basically stillborn. They let him keep, you know, working. What does that have to do with this? I don't know, nothing, of course, because you, it, you didn't read it in the New York Times. But it happened. It's coincidental. Supreme Court's blow to emissions efforts may imperil Paris Climate Accord. Scalia wrote the rebuttal to Obama's power grab with his green agenda. So let's get back to this issue of was Scalia murdered in plain English. I don't know how to mince the words. Uh, it's too late in my career to even know how to change the title of that question. I could change it a hundred different ways. Are there any questions about Anthony Scalia's passing? Did Scalia pass away of a heart attack? So I'll just say it like it is. Was Scalia murdered? Because the first minute I read, the first thing I thought when I read it was someone killed him. Well, immediately. Why? I don't know why. 
The minute I read pillow overhead, then I said, where's the Secret Service? No Secret Service. So, what? Okay. Really? Well, who owns the ranch? That comes out the ranch is owned by an Obama supporter and an Obama uh, award recipient. That's number three. Here's number four. Who is the U.S. Marshal in charge of that district? Robert L. Alma, R. Almonte, nominee for U.S. Marshal for the Western District of Texas. All right, fine. We don't know who he is. We're not here to disparage him. He was appointed by Obama. President Obama nominated Robert R. Almonte to serve as U.S. Marshal on March 25, 2010. That's not suspicious unto itself. Presidents appoint marshals all the time, says the New York Times, says the Washington Post. Well, there's a lot of pieces here that seem to lead back to the Peza Novante in the White House, doesn't it? The man who, who controls all the marionettes on the stage. He worked for the El Paso, Texas Police Department from 78 to 03 and rose to the, through the ranks to deputy chief of the Major Crimes Bureau. That's interesting. 25 years in El Paso. Spent the majority of his career in narcotics investigations and retired as deputy chief of the department in 03. I'm sorry, I saw the movie Traffic, so I'm cynical. That's all I can say at this point. How come you could go to a movie with Michael Douglas and see a movie called Traffic? Wow, look at that, man. Look at that. There's corruption on both sides of the border. Holy God. And then in real life, you see no corruption when it's tied to a Democrat. You can't see anything. None of you can see anything on the left. You're blind. You're deaf, dumb, and blind. All you could do is smear anybody who raises questions asking for the truth. That's all you can do is smear. Now, I don't even want to get into the election and the debate the other night, which I, I watched. I wasn't even going to cover it anyway. I thought it was a little clownish, to be honest with you. I didn't like it. I thought it diminished the, the entire Republican field. It shouldn't have happened. But that's because the RNC wants the entire Republican field diminished. They're rooting for Hillary Clinton. The RNC is rooting for Hillary Clinton because if I was a Republican candidate, I would refuse to appear in any further debates. I would not submit myself to any of these leftist questions. Let's see Hillary submit herself to question after question in 15 debates and see how, how long that candle takes to melt. Or the communist Bernie Sanders, the loser bum. That loser bum, every time I see a, a broken car riding by with a, a distorted face on it, says, go Bernie. I know what they are. A bum, a near-do-well into his late 30s who didn't earn a dime. A bum, lived off his family till he was in his 30s, failed at everything. An angry, radical spritzer, an agitator who never accomplished anything. He did nothing. Did you know he took his first bride, that Bernie did, to live in a maple sugar shack with a dirt floor, and she, she ditched him? She didn't want to use a toilet in the woods? See, then he's penniless, Bernie Sanders. He goes on unemployment. Okay, that happens. Then he has a child out of wedlock. Well, that's the norm in America today. That makes him even a better candidate to those with broken cars. Then he tries carpentry, but he couldn't even hammer a nail correctly. A friend told Politico magazine he was a terrible carpenter. His carpentry was not going to support him and didn't. Then he tried his hand free freelancing for leftist rags, writing about masturbation and rape, I'm quoting now, for $50 a story. So he was a bum. But they said the only thing that Bernie Sanders was good at was talking and talking and talking about socialism and how the rich were ripping everybody else off. All he talked about was the redistribution of wealth. And the rest is history. This worthless loser bum is now being taken seriously by all the worthless loser bums in America. So let's get back to this now. What does this have to do with this? Well, I gave you some new facts that you may not have read in your paper. No, a lot of conspiracy theories here for sure that we have to look at very carefully. And if we were in a classroom, we'd put them on a board and say, although we don't believe in conspiracy theories, here are five facts that are very embarrassing for the investigation. And since we live in an open society and people are allowed to question, here are the five things that are hanging out there for us to look at, boys and girls. Can you still follow me now? Can you follow the bouncy questions? Let's see now. Where do we begin? Pillow overhead, no secret service, marshal appointed by Obama, hotel owner, friend of Obama. Let's see now. What else is there? Medical examiner without as much sense as my dog's toenail clipping. 
no medical examiner. Well, so we have to look in a little further. Oh, uh, six days after the president's number one pork barrel green agenda was shot down by Justin Scalia. Scalia's found dead in the hotel. <laughs> Let me read you a paragraph. It's about gay marriage and what Scalia wrote. Just a day later, the court ruled state laws prohibiting gay marriage were unconstitutional, again overriding the wishes of the people and trampling upon the principle of constitutional government. Justice Kennedy issued what Justice Scalia called in dissent, quote, an opinion lacking even a thin veneer of law, unquote. Somehow, though, Kennedy imagined the ratifiers of the 14th Amendment to the Constitution extended equal protection of the law to homosexuals seeking to get married, even though homosexuality was illegal in every state at the time. This is where we are. We have three branches of government that are not only supposed to check each other with their separate powers, but limit themselves to the powers delegated to them in the Constitution. They do neither. Instead, they join together in looting our wealth, trampling our liberty, and destroying our culture at the behests of special interests and their lobbyists. That's page 10 of the most important book of your generation, Government Zero. And so here we are now. Now our heart stops the other day. Every decision that was good and just and fair was five to four. Five to four. It was always a squeaker. Well, the squeak is now over. And the fanatical man in the White House now wants to railroad somebody into that position. And my fear is that the Republican Party will not even oppose him. Oh, sure, they'll put up a fake fight, you know. They'll get the gobbler off his turkey ranch because he got everything he wanted. The gobbler got coal and then he shut his big fat mouth. The gobbler will go back to Kentucky and keep his mouth shut. And he will usher in another fanatic like Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who, by the way, I'm going to repeat it over and over again, that witch... The Wicked Witch of Washington, D.C. Ruth Bader Ginsburg had been the chief counsel for the anti-American, anti-Christian, anti-family ACLU for many years. She had no ability to be a fair justice, nor has she ever been. She's a fanatical left-wing maniac. How did she get appointed to the Supreme Court? The very same Republicans who put uh, Ginsburg on, who, who, let's say, anointed her. They're still there. They're still there. None of them have gone on to their rewards. They're still there. And it's only gotten worse. So there it is. I've laid the case out before the jury of the Savage Nation. I've laid out not the whole case, but I would say laid out a sufficient number of questions for anyone with a rational mind to say, you know what? Hey, the guy has a point. This is, is fishy. At the very least, let's get an autopsy and see what went on there. Was it a heart attack? Now they're saying it's not a heart attack. So initially when I read about it, I said, wait a minute, hold it now. Let me use my, my, my background in chemistry and pharmacology just for a few minutes. And I used the algorithm of my mind. And I remembered some of the pharmacology I'd read and then read some more on ways to trigger a fatal heart attack that wouldn't even be seen. So I want to talk about that because now we're finding it's not a heart attack. Now, many of you are saying, come on, you know, what happened here? Democratic Party donor, recipient of an award from Obama, discovers the body of Judge Scalia. Tells the judge, tells us that the judge had a pillow over his face. Judge's hands were folded in a funereal pose, with his pajamas unwrinkled, the bedding undisturbed. This means that the be neither the bed nor the pajamas were slept in. Means he laid down on the bed, and he was found with a pillow over his head in the morning. So what does that mean? Well, I have an answer from a mystery writer who I very much respect. He's, he's a very famous mystery writer. Very, very famous. He's written novels that you'd never believe he wrote. I don't know if I can even mention, I don't think I should, but, oh no, he's actually a co-author with Tom Clancy on some novels. My friend Jeff Rovin. And he said, it could also suggest the guy just laid down and stayed there. This is a very interesting one. Hmm. If he died early on, of course, the bedding wouldn't be disturbed. If he thought he was having indigestion or reflux, he might also put his hands on his belly and lie on his back. If, if, if he left early for a rendezvous, aha, rendezvous. He said, heck, men lie about going to bed early in a hotel for just that reason. Now, remember, he's a, he's a mystery writer, suspense writer. There would also be signs of another.